Welcome to this overview of PXF Smoke Box. So here I have some geometry already loaded into Nuke. I'm rendering it through Scanline Render. And I want to add some clouds, some steam around my mountain. So typically what we would do is create some noise with the noise node and apply that on a card and put the card in our scene like so make it bigger like that and place the smoke somewhere around the mountain like that and render that through our camera but that there's a problem if the camera moves then it's going to become apparent that our smoke is flat and it's moving on a single plane it's not moving in three dimensions it's it's basically the image of a cloud that's painted on a window here that's not what we want we want something that has some parallax that appears to be volumetric so to achieve that we need multiple cards all at different depths and when the camera moves then we will have a bit of parallax we can of course copy paste our card here and make different noise patterns on each card that's going to be a bit tedious and that's where pxf smoke box comes in so here in the pixel fudger menu i'm going to call a smoke box and put that in our scene i'm going to get rid of my card here and put the smoke box in the scene here by default, the smoke, smoke box is tiny. It's one by one at origin. If we need to move it around, we need to feed an axis on the axis input. And now we can use the axis to scale, rotate, and move our smoke box. So now if I look at it with the mountain, I can place my smoke where I need it. Somewhere like this, like so. So by default, smoke box creates 10 cards all stacked uh, one behind the other. So when the camera moves, you can see now that I have some parallax. The stuff in the foreground moves faster, the stuff in the background moves slower. So it gives me the impression of volume. So if I look at it through my render camera here, if I, my camera's animated, it's moving. So you can see, let's, lower the resolution in the viewer to make that a bit quicker to preview here we go so now you can see that the uh, smoke is moving in parallax properly so that saved me the trouble of creating 10 different cards and assigning different noise to each card and placing them properly in the scene i've saved uh, some effort to place all the cards together this is great but this is not groundbreaking this is a bit of a time savings. Where a smoke box really shines is when you have a big camera move like this, and eventually you end up seeing the side of your cards. So now as the camera is orbiting around the mountain, we end up with gaps between the cards and we can clearly see that the cards are flat and they're, you know, not really volumetric. So we need a solution for this. And the solution is to add another stack of cards so right now my stack of cards is a bunch of cards stacked in the z axis i need another stack of cards but these cards should be stacked on the x axis so i can go in my smoke box here and choose build zx so now we have more cards in both axes so one stack in the z axis one stack in the x axis that way when we render through our orbiting camera we will always have something to look at because by the time the camera goes to the side we see our x uh, axis stack and when we go back around now we see the z axis stack so that's pretty great but we can still see cards in the wrong orientation we can see them uh, from the side and we can see that they're flat so that's not great here so we need a way to hide these cards when they're not facing camera fortunately we do have an option for this it is the camera input here so if smokebox knows where the camera the render camera is then it's going to hide the cards or fade out the cards as they become sideways uh, relative to camera so we're going to feed our render camera here in the camera input and we're going to turn on 
fade out cards not facing camera. So basically, when the cards are facing camera, their opacity is full and as they become more and more sideways to camera, their opacity will decrease until they become fully transparent when they are seen completely from the side. So let's try that. There we go. So now you can see that the cards in the wrong orientation become uh, fully transparent here. So if we go back to the beginning, at the beginning the X stack is uh, disabled or uh, transparent and when we go to the side then the Z stack progressively disappears and the X stack progressively uh, reappears and so on and so on. That way our bunch of cards can be seen from any angle and we're never going to see the side of a card. This is pretty cool. This is this would be uh, very tedious to set up by hand because you would need to animate the opacity of every card and if your camera animation changes then you have to re-keyframe everything. So this is very very useful. Not only can you uh, create cards in Z and X but you can also do ZXY so if you need to see the smoke from the top then you can turn the third stack on so now I have 30 cards 10 in Z 10 in X and 10 in Y and same thing fade out cards will apply to all three stacks so the camera could do full on 360 orbits around the smoke I don't need uh, y though for this uh, particular camera move so I'm going to turn that off to render a bit quicker all right so this is pretty cool we can change of course the type of uh, noise that we have on there so we have all the typical adjustments for a noise um, node we can also adjust the uh, color and intensity so to make the smoke easier to see let's pump up the gain here here we go we can make it a bit more contrasty by lowering the gamma like so let's make it even brighter here we go so now we have something that starts to look pretty interesting so let's walk through the controls here we can choose how many cards we want and this will keep our noise uh, coherent so the noise is truly built under the hood as 3d noise so we can add or remove cards and the general shape of the noise shouldn't change uh, that much so if we look here if I go to 20 cards and go back to 10 you can see that the general shape of the noise is kept we lose a little bit of detail because the noise averages out but in general we keep the general gist of it so if I go back to 10 or 30, you can see that we have this general noise that is um, coherent in three dimensions. And if we go back to 10 here, you can see that no matter which side I look at it from, it's still gonna make sense in 3D, no matter how many cards I choose. So 10 is a good starting point. Actually, let's do a 20, just to have a little bit more definition. Here we go. So that's cool. You also have the resolution of the actual noise texture. So this is in pixels. So if we look at one card here, so this noise texture, each card has a 1024 by 1024 uh, texture on it. If we make it real low, then you can see it's pretty chunky. If we look at it through the scanline render, you can see it's pretty low res. So the default here looks works well. The box hardness is the feather around the noise. So if we look at it like that, if we have a very hard box, then the noise will go all the way to the edge of the card and poss possibly reveal the edge of the card. So the default of one is pretty good. If you want even more feather, then you would lower the box hardness even more. And now the texture goes nowhere near the edge of the card. I like the default of one for this shot. Uh, you can turn off and on various stacks. So if you need to uh, enable or disable some stacks to debug or for any reason, you can turn them on and off. You can, of course, fade out the cards not facing camera. Note that this will only apply to the camera hooked up to the camera input, so not to your viewer camera. So if you have this on and you orbit, you might end up missing some stuff because the cards are uh, 
disabled or hidden so turn that off while you're working with your 3d viewer the fade gamma is how aggressive you want the uh, cards to disappear when they're not uh, facing camera so if the fade gamma is low it will be very aggressive if it's high it's going to be not that aggressive so let's have a look here let's fade out our cards if i make it way too low what's going to happen is eventually there's going to be a gap because the cards will disappear too quickly and the next set of cards won't appear quickly enough and there's a moment where i don't see any cards uh, at all so that's a problem that's my fade gamma that's too low so the default value of 0.5 is good but sometimes you might need to tweak it if you see the edge of some cards you might want to lower this a little bit or if you see gaps where you don't see anything you might want to make this higher the noise controls here are pretty much identical to the noise settings and the noise uh, node for, from uh, nuke so we can change of course uh, the uh, scale of the noise so this is 3d scale so if you need to scale it in one axis or another or another you can push the three here and change for instance i can lower the y scale and make the noise flatter or make it taller and so on uh, you can also do all at once like that so if i make the noise smaller then this these are maybe big chunks here we go so as i'm scaling you can see the noise going smaller and smaller or bigger and bigger so you can adjust the scale of your noise that way this is animatable of course uh, you can uh, translate the noise inside of the box so if i look at the smoke box here let's uh, make this a little bit simpler 10 by 10 here we go so if i change the y translate for example you can see the noise moving up and down so this again is animatable so you have infinite noise that you can scroll that way you don't need to create a gigantic box if you ju just need something that scrolls uh, past camera uh, again this is animatable same thing of course you can translate left to uh, left to right with the x-axis oops i don't know where i'm at <laughs> here we go so if we move from the le left to right axis that way so you can make the noise move left to right you can move of course front to back if i look at it this way like so so i can move the noise front to back uh, octaves is how many octaves of noise so if you want really low frequency noise you would decrease this and now you have very smooth noise if you want detailed noise you need more octaves Lacunarity is how aggressive the octaves are. So if you have lots of lacunarity, you're going to have really buzzy noise. If you have low lacunarity, it's going to be really chunky and more like an aurora than smoke. <laughs> uh, you got the gain. So how much the octaves are multiplied between each other. So if you set this to low values, you're going to have uh, low detail. If you set it to high values, then you're going to have a lot of uh, noise. So the default of 0 0.5, 0 0.6 is a good starting point. Let's split the difference, 0.55. You can invert the noise, so parts that are transparent become opaque and vice versa. So that's a good way to create variations here. You can, of course, change the intensity of the noise, so make it darker or make it brighter. You can also uh, create colored noise, so you can make it any color that you want. And lastly, you can choose between two types of noise. You got FBM and uh, turbulence. So similar to what's inside the noise uh, node. So there you go. That was an overview of PXF Smokebox. I hope you've enjoyed it and I'll see you in the next video. Goodbye.